everybody, Lee with LG Speed and Custom here, and welcome to part two of airbagging a 59 Ford Galaxy. So when we left off in the last video, we had just finished installing the four-link rear suspension, and Jim finished up the airbags on the front. Next, we are going to cut the drive shaft tunnel out and cut a little piece out of the trunk floor so that the rear suspension can go another two inches higher, giving us another two inches of drop. Right now, the drive shaft is touching right in there. So I've just cleared out all this Dynamat. Let me tell you, Dynamat is a lot easier to install than it is to uninstall, but we made it work, we got it out. So now we're going to figure out the best way to lay this out and cut it. So I did this not long ago. Shannon and I did it in her Comet because her drive shaft was rubbing. And basically we just sliced from there to there and then opened it up in like, we moved the top or the back here two inches higher and left the front where it was. So it created like a wedge. And then just filled in the sides where we cut with a wedge shaped piece of sheet metal. This one's a little bit more complicated because we've got some braces in here and we've got this seat bracket here. So I think to start, we're just gonna cut this here and there on the other side, take this and set it aside. We are not gonna worry about that for now. And then we'll lay out a nice line here to cut, cut around the back and lift this up. Once that's lifted up and fit in place, then we can trim this piece down and fit it again. So I've just laid out some lines here and here to cut this out. The reason I picked that particular spot is to give us lots of room to work in here. And when we go to weld this back in, this is the easiest spot to weld. We don't have, we're not gonna be interfering with any of these body lines or anything. We just got the one line right there, nice and easy to get to and we can grind it nice and smooth after. So I always try to plan like 10 steps ahead when I'm cutting stuff. You gotta remember, you gotta put it back together. So pick the easiest way. Uh, in the first video, you guys saw Jim pulled the interior out and we've masked all the windows off. Well, except for that window, cause it's rolled down. Grinder sparks will mess up your glass. It etches it. So always mask off all your windows. And this car has a really nice interior. So that's why we just took it right out and masked the dash and everything off so that we're not spraying sparks on it. I've got a zip disc on the grinder ready to go. So we can chop that out. I've got a plan kind of laid out on here. So we're gonna cut across here. I don't wanna go any further back than that because as this comes up, it's gonna get further away from this back wall here. So I'm just gonna not worry about this for now. We'll get this brought up to where we need to be and then just shape a whole new piece to go in there. Most of this is gonna get cut out. I put a center line on here so that as this comes up, it will stay straight and not veer this way or veer that way. Up front, I kind of did the same thing. I measured from this point here forward so that we've got a relatively straight area to start at the front. We're just gonna have to go, I don't know, maybe, maybe leave an inch in the middle. That should be enough to flex. Then I took some tape and went from this point here 
all the way back. And the reason I use tape is because as it follows all the little dips and stuff, it will kind of keep a relatively straight line to cut on. I also traced it a little bit with some white grease pencil here, just in case when we're cutting this, if the tape you know falls off for whatever reason, we still have our line where we're gonna cut. So I did that on both sides. I kind of just eyeballed it to match it up the same. It's really hard to accurately measure side for side on this because everything is round and it's like, I was trying to like try to measure, you put a mark on one side of an egg and then go and try to put that mark on the opposite side of the egg and you have no reference points. So, so I just eyeballed it. It's going to be fine because we're going to be filling it in with weld or with uh, another piece anyways. And it's gonna have carpet over top of it. So if it's not exactly 100% perfect, nobody will ever know except for you guys watching this video. Well, that has been cut and lifted up. I tacked this little rod in here to keep it lined up and to set our height. I think it's, I haven't measured it yet. I don't know if it's two inches or an inch and a half back here, but the suspension is lifted up as high as it can go and we've got sufficient travel. So I've just taken the grinder here and cleaned all the undercoating off. That was probably the most fun job I think I've ever done in my life. I'm really sad that that part's over. So now we can, so now we can start making filler pieces to go in here. Basically just a triangle wedge that goes all the way back. So Shannon's car didn't have any of these crazy braces or anything and body lines. So I just did it in one whole piece and it was fine. This, I might break it up into, uh, I don't know, maybe one, two, three pieces just to make it a little more manageable. But I don't know, we'll wing it. We'll start with that. Plan A, wing it. Plan A of winging it is going along pretty smoothly. I've got my first piece kind of tapped in here. I decided to end it right here because there's a brace on the backside here. So when we splice this together, if you're looking on the backside, you won't see that splice because it'll be behind the brace here. So we'll go to the other side and I've got this piece roughed in on the other side and I'll show you how, how I fit these pieces. So here's our piece roughed in here. This is just 18 gauge sheet metal that I roughly shaped just using my, my fingers to get this contour. Notice how it's overlapped a little bit there and there. We wanna butt weld this, not lap weld it. But by fitting it over top like that, if we take this zip disc, this is a really thin zip disc, or the other thing I like to use is an air saw with, this is a hacksaw blade trimmed down in there. And what we're gonna do is kind of cut, sometimes I'll go right through both pieces or sometimes I'll use this as a guide and cut right along that edge. And then as we cut these two pieces apart, we can take our new piece and our original piece and line them up so that they're flat and then tack weld it. So we'll cut maybe an inch, an inch and a half, then tack it, cut another inch and a half, tack it, and we do that the whole way along. And that is, that's what I do to get a nice flush butt weld. 
So we'll do that on this side. And then once we have this side tacked in, we'll go and start making the rest of the pieces all the way to the back. So I'm sure there's other people that have different ways of doing this. There's tons of different ways for to do metal shaping and welding and stuff. In the end, as long as you end up with a nice like final product, that's all that matters. So if you've got a different way of doing it, cool. That's awesome. This is the way I like to do it. All right, I'm gonna start on this far end here and work our way back. Okay, I got attacked in a couple spots here. We're just gonna go through here and cut it a couple inches. Guy here, we're just gonna push on it until it's flush and attack it. And then keep doing that down both sides until we get to the end. All the pieces are tacked in place. Made a whole new piece for the back there. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld this up now and then we can move on. We're all welded up now. I apologize I did not film any of the welding because I don't know, I thought that'd be kind of boring for you guys to watch. But it's all welded up. I'm gonna knock it down with the grinders. Now, I'm not gonna get super carried away with trying to metal finish this or anything because it's gonna have Dynamat over top of it. And I'll probably spray some undercoating back on like it used to have. So we don't need to get crazy with it, but we'll knock the edges down at least. So now we can go ahead and fit this piece again. So it's pretty, pretty close actually. I think this little lip right here, I can probably just roll that up a bit and get it to drop down. It's gotta come down maybe like half an inch. Rolling it up got it really close, but not quite. So I ended up taking a zip disc and just putting a little relief cut there and there. It's clamped in place now, so we can go ahead and weld it up.
Got everything all kind of welded back together, ground down, cleaned up, vacuumed all the metal shavings out. So now I'm gonna just hit the bare metal with a little bit of self-etching primer here. And then I'm gonna spray some Easy Liner, bed liner on there to hopefully try to get the same kind of texture that used to be there. Uh, I've also ground the underside. That really sucked, <laughs> it was so gross. But um, yeah, we'll do the same thing on the underside as well. Just spray a little bit of this in. Oh man, this lid might be, oh, there we go. Just kind of like that. I should have done the other side first because now I have to crawl over this. Ah! Okay, I'm gonna go do the underside. Easy liner time. Hopefully this has some pretty good texture. I think it will. Get it all shaken up really nice. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, this is great. This is going to work really good. You guys probably can't see from that side. But on this side, it's killer. Okay, now so that you guys can see. Just blends everything right in. Cool, well that turned out pretty good. I'm happy with that. We're gonna let this dry and then we'll put some fresh Dynamat over top of it. And maybe we could even just put the interior back in. That'd be nice. Suspension's completely bottomed out right now, and the drive shaft still turns with plenty of clearance. I can slide my fingers through here. So. That's a successful wind. So Jim's been busy putting all the dynamat back down and reupholstered this piece here. He's now bringing in the carpet. Hi, Jim. Hi. While he's been doing that, I've got started on the rear bags. So these are using a Slam Specialty six inch sleeve bag. These are different from the front bags, which are a double convoluted bag. The main difference being the ones up front can flex side to side, whereas these ones are mostly supposed to go up and down. These are basically a smaller version of what's on the back of like a semi truck. So through the power of Google, and we did a test on the, on the press, this will compress down to four and a half inches. So what I've done is, this is still a little warm. I have made a mock-up airbag at four and a half inches. This is the same diameter as the airbag and four and a half inches tall. So we can use this to build our brackets. Let's go under the car and see how it looks.
So while we're under here, also, I just want to point out, I got the exhaust figured out. I just had to, there was a little spot up there where it was clamped together and I just had to spread, undo the clamp and spread that apart a little bit. And we got all the clearance we need back here. So when I did this on Ryan's 57 Ranchero, we mounted the bag in the back here, but I'm a bit concerned about it being close to the tailpipe. So I think I might go in front of the axle right there, which will also give us a little bit more lift. Not that we need more lift, but. So I don't know which I'm gonna do in front or behind, probably in front. But this is as far as my planning has got. So I'm gonna figure out how to mount this in here and then fill you guys in. I made a little mock-up airbag mount out of just these 14 gauge plates that I have. 14 gauge, like I mentioned earlier, is a lot cheaper than quarter inch plates, so it seemed to work okay. So I've just cut one out of quarter inch plate. We're going to go mock that up under the car and tack it in place and then build a little upright going to the axle. Okay, this guy is gonna go right there, like that. Very nice. Woo. So once again, we're making 14 gauge templates here. This guy slides right in there. I've decided to leave this spring perch on. I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking, oh, you should cut that off. But this way we can take all this stuff off and put this car completely back to stock if somebody wanted to. So I'm going to leave it there. I made a little notch in there that fits in the spring hole. So that's going to weld across the top. And then this guy goes along like so to provide a little bit of a gusset as well. So I'm gonna make one out of quarter inch now and tack it together. And hopefully if my measurements are correct, we can do a mirror image of this on the other side. There we go, that's all tacked in. I'm pretty happy with that. I went ahead and did the other side as well, and it worked out perfect, which is nice. That means that we're nice and square. So I think we're gonna start figuring out the upper bag mount now, where it attaches to the frame. Alright, I've got our upper bag idea. So I've already tried it on the driver's side. I've got it mocked up on the passenger side now to make sure it works. But basically we've got, this is our airbag top plate. So it touches the frame rail right here. So we can weld a nice bead along here. And then I've got an upright from here that is the width of the frame rail there and that basically is going to form a triangle in there so that that will sit nice and tight up against the frame i was considering putting a little triangular gusset in there but i don't know if we really need it the reason i'm holding off on it is because we got to be able to get our hands in here to get we've got an air fitting that's going to come through here and we gotta be able to get to these bolts. So I don't want to make this area too tight. I've got one other one mocked up on the actual bag here. And if we go with a swivel airline in here, or air fitting, we can run the airline in through the side and it will plug into here. 
and we still got room to, because our frame rail is going to be like this. So I'm going to weld these up now and probably put them in the car. I think it should work okay. It's only going to be going up and down. There's going to be no back and forth stress at all on it. So I think it's going to be just fine. Okay, let's try the actual airbag now. Yeah, that fits pretty good. We'll bolt it in to the other side as well and then maybe do a, do a cycle with the jack. That worked out so great. I'm stoked with it. I think this is gonna work. We can probably final weld all this stuff now. And I guess, I don't know, we might build shock mounts first. We still gotta do the shocks. You know, on second thought, I think I'm going to weld it all up and then we'll do the shocks. Cause I have to cycle it to its like full max and full compressed to figure out the shock length. And I don't want, this is all just tacked together right now and I don't want my tack welds to break. So we'll pull the bags out, drop the rear end down and buzz, 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 just because.
Okay, so for the shocks, we're not going to do that right now because it is 5 o'clock. It's the end of the week. I'm hungry, and I don't even have shocks to try in there. Part store is closed, so we'll do that on another video. But in this video, we covered raising the drive shaft tunnel and building our rear airbag mounts. Next video, we'll do shocks and then maybe start laying out some of the, the air tanks, the compressors, and looking at the air management system. This car is going to be having an AccuAir E-Level kit, which has little sensors that we got to figure out on the suspension still, so that it can, the computer rigamaru boobop box knows where the wheels are sitting all the time. So it's way less complicated than it sounds. So yeah, we'll cover that. Thanks everybody for watching. If you want to support the channel, check out the website, lgspeedcustom.com. I am wearing an LG Speed and Custom shirt underneath six layers right now. It is, we're on second winter right now. It is freezing out. This poor furnace has not shut off in probably 18 hours straight. It's just been running away. So hopefully it warms up. The next video, it'll be warmed up. We'll be working on t-shirts in here. So yeah, music. Switchblade Valentines, check them out on Bandcamp. You can download their entire album for like five bucks. They'd really appreciate that. So if you're into the music, go check them out. All the bands that we use on every video that we've done, you can find them all on Bandcamp. So Switchblade Valentines, Hot Rod Hollow Blue, uh, who else? Rod Iron Haulers, the Cavaleros, Christian Heads, solo stuff. So go check it out. And yeah. I'm going to get some food now. We'll see you guys later.